All right, we're given some information here, a random sample of 87 eighth graders. So my sample size is 87. See how when I read, I write stuff down? And um, their scores on a national mathematics assessment test had a mean, so the sample mean, 282. So the results prompt the state school administrator to declare that the mean score actually is higher than the past. Okay, so what they're saying, the null, or the, I'm sorry, the claim, which is going to be the alternative hypothesis, is that based off of this sample, it looks like they're doing better, right? So the null now, your book does the complement, which would just be less than or equal to. I typically always use an equal, but we need to go with your book, so be sure and use, use this. All right, it says the population standard deviation is 39, and we're going to test this at an alpha of 0 0.02. So even though you can just throw this in technology and you can just get an answer right away, you should draw a picture of what this means and what you're doing. So this is what they're saying has been the average. We went out and we got a sample. So we went out and we got a sample and it's 282. We want to know, is that far enough away? What's far enough away? That, your alpha, your significance. Is that far enough away to justify that we think the scores are getting higher. Well, we want to look up our probability, so we are going to use a Z table because we know the population standard deviation. We're going to standardize this to zero. So what we need then is what would be that Z value. And this is where we use the formula that we take our sample mean minus our null over the standard deviation, and when you're given a sample size, divided by the sample size. So my sample mean was 282 minus the null mean, 275, all over 39 divided by the square root of the sample size, 87. And when I do that, I get 1.67. All right, so this question has you compare alpha with the p-value. So how do you get the p-value? If I have a z of 1.67, I'm basically asking you for a p-value. What is this probability? Is it higher than 0 0.02? Okay, because if it is, then... Um, in, in that case, if I get a p-value greater than 0 0.02, then I'm going to reject the null hypothesis. Remember, if the P is low, the null must go. If the P is high, the null must fly, all that good stuff. Well, how do I find a P value? Well, 1.67, I go get my table. And what table are you getting? The Z table. Why are you getting the Z table? Because we know the population standard deviation. And I find 1.67 and I get 0.9525. However, remember what that value is. That's from here to that Z value, 0 0.9525. If I want this area, then I have to take and subtract 1 minus, and I get 0, 0.0. Oh, I didn't finish my, my, my writing there. Sorry about that. And I get 0 0.0475. And as you'll see in the problem, I'll show you here in a second, they want you to round it to three decimal places. So if the P value of 0 0.048 is greater than alpha, which it is, then we fail to reject the null. All right, so let me show you the actual problem here real quick. So here is the actual problem. You can see setting up the hypothesis, my uh, Z value, my P value. We fail to reject 
So in other words, if this 2% significant, there is not enough evidence to support their claim that the scores are higher. Okay, we fail based off on this data, we fail to reject. Um, you can do this in StatCrunch. Please wait. And so in StatCrunch, you'll just go to Stat. This is Z, one sample with summary. I don't have any data. And so I put in my sample mean. I put in my standard deviation. I put in my sample size. And just don't forget here to change this. And as you can see, they're going to always force it to be equal, which is what I believe. And then here, my alternative hypothesis needs to match there. So 275. And I hit compute. And I get the 1.67. And I also get, which this is a little off, but they're probably doing this whole Z value. I get the 0 0.0471. And then, sorry, I forgot to open my calculator real quick. I can also do this with a calculator. Okay. Okay. All right. So with my calculator here, I can go to stat, test. The very first one, this is a Z test. I want to input data, mu not the null mean, which was 275, the standard deviation, which was 39. Oh, sorry, go to stats. <laughs> go back up here. I don't have data. This is stats. So 275, 39, the Sample mean was what, 282. My sample size, and I'm doing a right tail test greater than. I hit calculate, and I get all the same answers. All right, so either way you do it is fine. It's just you really, really need to understand. Otherwise, you get so used of using technology, you don't really understand what you're doing. And when you first learn to do hypothesis tests, I think the best thing to do is draw a picture of the null hypothesis and then your sample and figure out, did it fall in your rejection region based on looking at p-values?